a short introduction for you on some points to consider when you are reflecting on the adult's role in children's outside play. So first of all, you have the age-old cycle that all early years practitioners and play workers consider, the plan, do, and review. So identify a plan, plan what you're going to do in the outside area with children, and set up the resources. Make the outside environment inviting, engaging, and provide meaningful resources that the children can use, manipulate, and develop. And then do it. Go out with the children, play with the children, supervise their play, adapt the environment dynamically as you are um, with the children, and um, observe, observe the learning and the play that's taking part. And this observation will inform you of improvements that you can make to the environment, other ways that you can plan and adapt the environment to support specific children or specific groups of children. And the observation will also tell you what learning is taking place and how effective um, the environment that you've planned and set up um, is. And the review part is obviously then you reflecting on what happened in the garden, evaluating the learning, the setup, what went well, what didn't. Plan, re do, review. That's really um, a key aspect of um, working in the outside space with children. Now, as part of your planning, you should consider how you can build on and extend children's current knowledge, their current skills, and also how you can build on and extend the interests of children. So let me give you some examples. Um, superhero play, you could bring out costumes to the garden and create a superhero climbing den that they have to climb up and jump off of as different kinds of superheroes, um, for example. Um, extending their skills, that could be about um, balancing. So you could create lots of different types of balancing opportunities in the garden, um, and some more, more um, hard or challenging um, than others. Um, as part of your planning, you should also consider choice and how children can be involved in choosing what they do in the garden and choosing how they use the resources that are on offer. While you're in the garden and supporting children, here's some of the things that you could be doing with them. Uh, first of all, talking about the play with them, talking about what's on offer, talking about how to use um, the play and how to engage in play in the garden. Um, validating children's efforts is a really important aspect of supporting outside play with children. So um, telling them well done for things, but being specific, um, validating the choices that they're making um, and uh, validating when they make achievements as well in the garden. Um, by adding to the play and joining in with the play yourself, becoming a, an active participant in a game, in imaginative play, in an obstacle course, this will provide you with the opportunity to model what is um, the desired behaviour or the way that the play can take place. And also part of your role is about preventing problems when you're in the garden by putting yourself in areas that support problem solving and also um, spotting and identifying when a problem is brewing and taking action, um, decisive action, um, to deal with that. And that action might be the addition of resources, so children are not fighting over limited resources. It might be the um, using language or suggestions to provide different ideas or opportunities for children. 
Part of your role when you're in the garden is about developing relationships, building the relationships that you already have with children, um, entering the children's world, their world of play, um, scaffolding, the Vygotskyan term of um, supporting children within their zone of proximal development. That's the distance between what they can do completely independently and what they can do with adult or more experienced peer support. That's the zone of proximal development. And by working with them in that zone of proximal development, you can um, support um, support their play through, through scaffolding. Um, providing opportunities for children to initiate play as well. And a big part of your role is how you support challenging and risky play, not stopping children from um, engaging in risky play, but how you can encourage and support that. Um, helping children to negotiate with each other and negotiate in the outside space is a key part of your role. And role modelling, especially with inclusion, how to include children, um, how to include others, but role modelling is, is definitely part of your role when you're working in the garden. Teaching children how to take care of the environment is also a major part of your role when you're working in the garden with children not just tidying up and organizing the equipment and resources and taking care of them, but also deeper care of the environment, the care of the natural world, plants, trees, and also how to um, look after the resources more longer term as well. So cleaning resources, repairing resources and equipment, um, and also making as many links to the natural world when you're in the garden as you can. So that might be to the weather, that might be to living things, um, etc. Um, a part of your role is also about encouraging and supporting children. Um, and that might be where they need help in engaging or trying out new things. And you can be the bridge for children to um, help them uh, climb, explore, um, and they might only be willing to do that with your help or your support. Um, just thinking also about gender bias. There is also a, a gender bias um, in play, um, and specifically play on the outside, and it's important at least that you're aware of that gender bias and that you're encouraging and supporting gender equality in the garden. Um, and finally, I just want to um, talk about the importance of leading versus supporting. There will be times in the garden where it's appropriate for you to lead and initiate play and play activities and um, learning activities but there's also time where it's important for you to stand back and think about what your role as a supporter is rather than being in the middle and leading and, and, and doing um, and those are some of the things that we've discussed so I hope this short introduction will help you to think about ways that you can um, be an active participant in the garden and always um, be active and doing things um, when you're in the outside space, whether that's observing play and making a written record of observations or whether that's participating in children's play or whether that's leading activities or finding more subtle ways to support and encourage in the outside area. <laughs>